What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the sun, well, you've come to the right place. Seven months ago, Mama Max made a video called Pick a Side YouTube. In it, he made a bunch of allegations that YouTube was protecting pedophiles and allowing dangerous content to be uploaded to the side, all while deliberately silencing the people calling it out. These, of course, were completely unfounded, but that didn't stop the YouTube community from rallying to his side. Of course, while everyone was making a big fuss about this, the commentary side of things saw right through Max, and were quick to point out that, well, making unfounded allegations regarding pedophilia is generally not a good thing. That didn't stop the movement from getting YouTube's attention, and the movement was quickly written off as a win, which is funny because absolutely nothing about the platform has changed. No policies have been rewritten, the terms of service hasn't been updated in any reasonable way. People say that hashtag pick aside YouTube was a success, but what did it succeed at? People are too busy celebrating their so-called win that they haven't realized that they didn't even win anything. I digress. The movement's pretty much dead. Why am I bringing it up at all? Well, Mama Max made a video. This is what happened to a child predator on TikTok. Well, alright, he made a video. So what? Well, for whatever reason, the first 10 minutes is dedicated to him making jabs at the commentary community. And I guess it makes sense why he's trying to bring us down. I mean, we were pretty much the only one who were willing to criticize him. And, well, he don't like that no how. Let's roll the video. We're gonna skip the opening cinematics because they're cringe and frankly not relevant. So today there's this cringe lord named Momo Max. He's this fucking arrogant asshole prick on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, trying to start the next adpocalypse, I guess. Alright, I know what he's trying to do here. He's trying to parody the commentators who talked about him, and right off the bat, you have an incredibly dishonest and frankly pathetic attempt at Mama Max trying to victimize himself. To my recollection, no one said that this was gonna cause the next adpocalypse, and no one said that that was his intent. Again, I get it, it's satire, but in order for a satire, an exaggeration to work, it has to be based in reality. If you're just gonna, like, make stuff up, well, that ain't funny, man. No, sir. Oh, no, you don't. Not on my watch. I'm gonna fucking destroy you now. Because this is my livelihood. You posed a threat. You dare pose a threat to my monetization? Again, no one said that this would threaten their monetization statuses. The only person pushing this argument, this narrative, is you. No. No. I'm out here changing lives, reacting to Twitter drama all day. What? I mean, you ask any commentator who's in the game, they tell you that what they're doing is insignificant. Hell, even I tell you that. I make fun of people for a few laughs and giggles and that's it. I don't pretend that I'm changing the world and neither is anyone else really in the community. Again, I get it, he's trying to like parody the community, but it just doesn't work when you just like make stuff up. Let's watch this shit. Actually, you know what? Before we even watch it, let's take a caller. Hi, you're live on the air. I pick pedophiles. This, my friends, is what you call trying too hard. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I absolutely agree. Thank you so no, much but, for but calling seriously, me. I am a... I get it, he's making fun of Tommy C, shot from the point, right? I get that. But this attempt to mock him by, like, acting like a lunatic makes him come off as desperate, you know? Desperate to get in own. Like, he's screaming in his mic, going haywire. Honestly, it just makes me picture him seething through his tears as he wrote up a script, planning to get this video out, right? Like, this whole bit, he's trying to clown on the commentary community, but it's really just him who looks like the clown. After YouTube took down the previous video for the usual dumbass reasons, I called upon you all to force them into responding, and the shitstorm that subsequently followed graciously gave us exactly that. Although I am beyond grateful for the results. Okay, again, I ask, what results? You convinced a bunch of people that YouTube was harboring pedophiles, they got a hashtag trending, and that's it. Like, the platform is still as broken as it was yesterday, and if you want proof of that, well, just look at hashtag justice for Actman. Again, I really don't get what it is with this guy. He's taking a victory lap, but it's like, what did you win? What did you accomplish? Nothing. I do not condone the harassment of innocent people just because they disagree with us. 
There were even those I could learn a thing or two from, and I can see how some felt I made a mockery of your struggles and your traumas for personal gain. I do too. I mean, all this guy does is take serious crimes like pedophilia and turns them into art projects, essentially. He turns them into cheesy horror flicks. And that is the last thing I ever want. So I apologize to all CSA survivors who were hurt by my video. As for the rest of you, you do not kiss your mother with that mouth. Oh! From the very DNA I designed the Pick a Side campaign, we impelled the mobs to howl our message into the high heavens. Oh wow, what a twist. Mama Max engineered this whole thing from the very start. You got us, Max. You really did. You made a bunch of outrageous statements and people got outraged. You truly are a master manipulator. Some with a bit more salt than others. You're a fucking liar! You're a piece of shit! You're not a journalist! You don't give a- You're a clout chasing just another YouTuber! You're no different than anybody else! You don't give a rat's yes, and you can suck! MY DICK! You probably noticed these QR codes popping up, and from what I've heard, they're apparently bits of text responding to what this person, his name's Tommy C, says, and I've tried to scan them, but the thing is, they pop up for like milliseconds at a time, so I gave up. Like, look, Max, I'm not gonna spam pause the video just to scan your stupid QR codes. Either have them on the screen for longer, or put them in a damn Google Doc. As far as what Tommy's screaming about, that's what he does. It's entertainment, and it's damn funny. <laughs> Make yeah, sure get fuck you! Sure. Fuck oh, you! Man. How about this? How about this? How about look at the camera? You know what? <laughs> you look like a creepy pedophile. Maybe you touched a kid or two. Well, okay, I know this sounds wrong, but I mean, can I be honest? He ain't wrong. Hey, baby, how you wanna be with an older man? That was a prediction, and you fell right into it. As predictable as you all are. What I did not foresee, however, was when you accidentally aligned with actual pedophiles along the way. This is the, the most impressive tweet on this so far. Uh, it, it is, it, and the only guy with balls, if you ask me. And B, Vito's got the balls to crack this joke. I pick pedophiles. <laughs> I pick pedophiles. <laughs> well, because he gave me a choice. <laughs> One week later. Vito said this, having basic empathy for non-defending pedophiles will ultimately lead to less child abuse. Not defending means that we understand breaking the laws is a no-no, all right? Keep it in brand with making pedophile accusations with absolutely minimal evidence, Mama Max accuses Tommy C of aligning himself with two supposed pedophiles, Vito and Mr. Girl. I can see a simple conversation is asking for too much when you're busy inviting more pedophiles onto your show. Mr. Girl. Cause you're a pedophile. <laughs> you're a pedophile. Hey, you know, nice here's the you. thing about you. Like, I, I, I want to like you, um, because oh, I. I, I... I already like you. Oh, that's great. Now, Vito is an obvious troll. He says stuff to get a razz out of people, and that's what this is. We're talking about the same guy who calls himself a free speech absolutist, yet tries to get a podcast he don't like taken down because it had Alex Jones in it, and then he appears on Infowars. It should give you an idea of how seriously you should take the guy. And Mr. Girl is much of the same. He's a troll as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's that guy who made the Cuties review, the review on the movie with the 13-year-old girls twerking. It was disgusting stuff, and again, that video was clearly made to garner outrage. It was supposed to make you mad and, well, it was funny. To him, I guess. And you know, I kinda see what Max is doing here. He's trying to spin a narrative by cherry picking evidence and hoping his viewers are too dumb to know better. And to be fair, they probably are. And it's a case of, well, you're either being dishonest or stupid. Either way, it's yet another pathetic attempt to get a dunk on Mr. C. And when I confronted these hypocritical little contrarians on their own bullshit, they would not let me speak to them. Sure. Well, Max is in the chat money, trying to bait you to bring him on. And he's saying, wish we could have talked like adults, man. Could talk like, like dude, adults? You didn't make a DMs. fucking video like a fucking adult. That a, any, no, anybody other than a... Now, nah, I'll actually give this one to Max. If you make a stream calling someone out, if you're gonna yell and scream about them, let them have a fighting chance to do the same. It's only right, you dig? I didn't know making a video like an adult meant reacting to Twitter drama and screaming at the camera like a whiny little baby. All because I intentionally made a video worth talking about. Please teach me your ways, washed up commentary channel number 46,853. Now, you know what's funny? He calls him a washed up commentator, but it's like, if he's so washed up and irrelevant, well, 
First of all, why'd you try to call into a show? Second of all, why are you dedicating 10 minutes of your video? Why are you devoting so much time trying to get an own on this guy? If he's so irrelevant, he should be worth ignoring. It's like you have two options here. Either respond to what he's saying, or he's irrelevant and washed up enough to ignore. You can't have it both ways. This whole thing where you try to have your cake and eat it too just comes off as desperate. Well, I can't say it was the wrong choice. Because your friends that did end up talking to me... Let's just say they did not like the humiliation. Either way, they did everything we wanted them to do. Because in their every attempt to deplatform us, they kept giving us the very platform we instructed of them. Again, wow, you're such a master manipulator. You accused the company of protecting pedophiles with no evidence and people got mad. Like, it's like if I were to accuse you of being a serial murderer and then you got mad at me for it. Heh, <laughs> yeah, he's mad at me for accusing him of murdering people. How predictable. Like, wow, you got us. You truly are a master of the human sack. Also, no one was trying to deplatform you. No one said, this guy needs to be thrown off the platform. No, when we criticized you for your movement, right, we kept it to that. Criticism. No one tried to get your channel deleted, your monetization removed. We just criticized you. If you ask me, this is honestly just a tactic he's trying to employ and try and victimize himself to try and further an us versus them narrative. And to his credit, his viewers are probably dumb enough to fall for it. However, in my quest to use them all like a doormat leading me to whom I originally intended, like Charlie and Philip. This is like the 10th time I've rolled my eyes at this video. Like, I don't know why he keeps trying to convince us that he's such a master manipulator. Like, yeah, I used you guys. I played you for the fools you are. Like, okay, do you actually believe that though? Because when you keep reminding us, it doesn't feel like you do. It feels like you're trying to convince not just us, but yourself. I gratefully found that there were some good apples in the bunch. You know what's funny about this? He brings up the Half-Baked Podcast, which had Vito on it. And one of the hosts, Nicholas DiOrio, talked with Mr. Girl, so it's like, you criticize Tommy C for having people like those on a stream, and then you go on to call people who've done the same good apples. Whoopsie daisy, Max. Looks like you've got yourself an inconsistency. After all, in the end, it was never about making YouTube pick a side. Nope, it was about getting some of that sweet, sweet clout for your channel. Anyways, that's all I care to respond to. I mean, that's pretty much where the quote-unquote prologue ends. And you know, and you want to know what the funniest part about this was? The prologue has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the video. Apparently, it's about some pedophile on TikTok, so I'm kind of left scratching my head. Why did he feel the need to insert this segment into his video? This is a segment where he copes about the commentary community what does that have to do about TikTok? I don't get it. Honestly though, what's especially funny is, this happened seven months ago. This is dead drama. It's done. Over. Kaput. Get over it. But for some reason, he tries to bring it up to, I don't know, getting owned on the commentary community? It just comes off as, I don't know how to describe it, but obviously the commentary community got under this guy's skin, right? He obviously felt humbled, humiliated in some way, shape, or form, and he decided to use his latest video as a way to vent about it. It feels desperate. It feels like he's coping and seething, to be honest. You can tell he wanted to get an own on the commentary community, but in his futile attempts to do so, he turned the barrel of the gun on himself and showed the community that clearly we got under his skin. Again, this is a dead situation from seven months ago. He wouldn't bring it up if he wasn't angry to tears about it, is all I'm saying. And what's even funnier is, he's trying to get an own on the broader commentary community, but most of this segment, or a sizable portion of it, is dedicated to Tommy C. So he's not really calling out our community, which is his intent, he's just calling out a member of it. And again, by his own words, Tommy C is washed up and irrelevant. But it's like, if that's the case, why are you spending so much time trying to get a one-up on him? If he's so irrelevant, why are you talking about him? Again, it's another case where he's trying to get a gotcha on someone, but all he really does is prove how mad he really is. Mama Max, you've done it again. Again, you've embarrassed yourself at the feet of the commentary community, and I'll give you credit, it was a good show you put on, but as far as my show goes, I've got nothing else for the day. So, you guys do old Jack your favor and keep it groovy. Thank you, thank you very much.